I'm back at it, back on the channel. You know, right now, all the talk, if you follow this mainstream trash rap, is Kendrick Lamar and his verbal and lyrical, I guess if you want to call it lyrical, his musical, if you want to call it music, his musical uh, assault, his, his full court press pause on Aubrey Graham. Obviously, Kendrick Lamar is the winner by far, a landslide, no debate. But that made me think. If you look at the history of uh, quote unquote battles, a wise individual, an intelligent person, somebody who 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 has a direction or a destination they're trying to get to, you have to be consistent. And you have to capitalize on certain opportunities. Now, Kendrick Lamar, he has all the financial backing. Because always remember, Kendrick Lamar is a slave and a puppet for Universal Music Group, the same as Aubrey and the rest of them. That's why I don't believe none of these rappers. If you ain't independent, you can go to hell or go to Cleveland. Same place. Hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to this channel. Check out my latest uploads. Jay Prince is going at it with, 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 <laughs> with Mace. The children of the corn have reunited. Cameron and Mace versus Jay Prince. Check out that video. Oh, man. I, I know so many old Negroes like Jay Prince. It's disgusting, really. Uh, speaking of older Negroes, I want to say Free Suge Knight, but arrest Puffy. Yeah, Free Suge Knight. Uh, R. Kelly, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if R. Kelly should be in a cage, but I don't think he should really be in, in public either. Maybe a nice medium is a halfway house. Anyway, but when it comes to capitalizing on a beef or a battle, especially a battle victory, you have to capitalize on it. You can't just sit back and read the comments of people praising you. Kendrick Lamar, you know, uh, they, they, you know, they had a little multiple song back and forth, whatever. But the main song is that Not Like Us, obviously. The other songs, whatever. Um, I already reviewed that song in the video and what, check out those videos. But Kendrick Lamar's capitalized. He, he's, uh, you know, he had a, a major concert that was another Illuminati ritual. And um, they tried to shame you if you're from L.A. and wasn't there because this is a bunch of monkey followers. Always remember, always remember, rap is one big high school. Oh, uh, how come you're not supporting Kendrick Lamar? Great, it's one big high school. We like this person, so you have to support them. We don't like this person, you have to be against them. Rap is one big high school. Or maybe a middle school, whatever. A lot of you, uh, a lot of you Negroes was in the free lunch program. <laughs> a lot of you Negroes and Puerto Ricans. But um, I can't stand a Puerto Rican. Why do Dominicans always leave the house with no socks on? Anyway, the Kendrick Lamar's capitalized on this. The not like us video and you know all this subliminal puppet nonsense. I'm telling you, he's a puppet like all the rest. But whatever. Um. But somebody who also defeated Aubrey Graham, and really, there's a long list. I mean, what rapper has not bodied Aubrey Graham? Name me one who hasn't. Okay, Jay-Z will diss him and then do a song with him, and then diss him and do a song with him. And <laughs> Jay-Z's <tro> <laughs> That camel face coon, Jay-Z, he been trolling Aubrey for years. Diss him, pound cake. Diss him, this song. Diss him, <laughs> please. But uh, another rapper who bodied, and maybe the greatest body, is Pusha T. Now, I mentioned this before, actually. Who bodied Aubrey the greatest? The actual greatest diss song towards Aubrey Graham is actually King Los. I don't, I forget the name of it. I doubt if you type in Aubrey or Drake diss, it comes up. But King Los made a diss towards little Aubrey Graham's. It is the most vicious diss. You have to hear it. I, I, don't, I forget the title of it. But uh, you can look it up somewhere. He dissed the hell out of him. That's the best diss, but King Los is someone who's been blackballed for years. And part of his blackballing actually involves Kendrick Lamar. But I'll talk about that on another video another day. King Los is the best rapper in the world, by far. He's clearly the best rapper. Can't nobody outrap him. He's the best. But he's been blackballed by the industry. Um, and Puffy did nothing to help him with that. The uh, blackballing. He, he helped him financially because Puffy does... You know, for years, Puffy been doing music, and he still has people ghostwriting for him. King Los been ghostwriting for him. So, you know, he helped King Los in other ways, but not the complete blackballing way, but whatever. Um, but someone who capitalized was Pusha T. Someone who destroyed Aubrey was Pusha T. 
Daytona. Infrared. Oh, my God. He just destroyed him. Now, Pusha T is someone who I can't really stand him either. You, you can't trust middle-aged Negroes who get their braids retwisted every three Wednesdays. You can't trust that. Plus, I, I, don't trust, I, don't, I don't trust Negroes from Virginia. I really don't. Okay, if you're from Baltimore, PG County, Virginia, Gaithersburg, if you're from Hagerstown, if you're from Southeast D.C., anywhere in D.C., I don't really trust you. So who do I trust? Me, that's who. But um, Pusha T destroyed Aubrey Graham, destroyed little Dwayne Carter, who who's known for tongue-kissing Birdman. I mean, he slapped the stars off board. He st he slapped the stars off Birdman's forehead. Birdman's another one. Never seen him with a mustache. <laughs> Never seen Birdman with a full beard. Why? Why is that? Why is it always those um, the mainstream puppets? Why are they always cleanly shaved? Most of them. You ever seen Shannon Sharp with a mustache? Anyway, the Pusha T, he destroyed Aubrey Graham way worse than Kendrick Lamar did. But he did not capitalize. And I'm speaking on this specific situation. When uh, Pusha T dropped Daytona, a good album. You know, there's some songs in there I can't stand. You know, they had Officer Rick Ross, Hard Piano. Ugh. What would Meek do? <laughs> Bunny Hop, Leave You for Dead. But um, he destroyed him, Infrared. And, and really, there were subliminals all throughout that album. But um, what did he do after it? Daytona came out. You know, it did very well for, you know, today's standards of music. You know, no one buys albums unless you're like Griselda. But um, it did well. It got the attention, the views, uh, classic diss songs, some good records on there. If you know, you know. That's like a common phrase now. If you know, you know. The beat is fire. Kanye West production. You know, this is still when Kanye West is going crazy, losing his mind. But um, you know what's funny on this channel? I don't think I ever really made a Kanye West video. I think I have a video like reviewing one of his albums, but I never really talk about him on this channel. My, my channel is kind of like social commentary, analysis, and things like that, but I never really talk about Kanye West. I, I Maybe because I was never really a fan of him. Like to me, I like the Graduation album. I, I, I don't know, I never really listened to Kanye West like that. I love Graduation though, except that except that one, except uh, two songs. I, I never liked that... Um, what was that song, Barry Bonds? Eh, eh, I don't know. And I, I didn't like Drunken Hot Girls. But uh, anyway, so Kanye West is producing on that album, Daytona. I believe the album cover was like a, wasn't it Whitney Houston's hotel room when she drowned or whatever? Distasteful, whatever. But Pusha T destroyed him. But he did not capitalize on it. He did not take advantage of it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Infrared, did that have a music video? I don't believe it did. If you know, you know how to music video. Pusha T did not capitalize on this. I believe after he did the whole album and the song, I think the main thing he did was like maybe a Breakfast Club interview and, and Joe Budden podcast. Now, the interview he had on Joe Budden podcast, that was a good interview. It was long as hell. That's what she said. But that's it. And then like, I think he like, I don't know. I think he like didn't put nothing out for like two years or maybe got married or maybe he found a new broad to braid his braids I don't, I don't know but he was like gone for like a year year and a half two years he didn't put nothing out then he returned and i think he returned with like a i think it was like maybe like i don't know if it was like a a short ep but it, he had like a song with lauren hill which was like all right and yet yeah like i think he came back with like two or three just singles or something but he just and it, then it died down he did not take advantage of it but kendrick lamar did and kendrick lamar has more backing and uh, then uh, Pusha T, but Pusha T had tremendous backing. He has Kanye West beside him, and that's the biggest reason. If you ever wondered, you know, when it comes to you know artists getting blackballed, you ever wonder how come Pusha T didn't get blackballed? He was dissing Birdman and Little Dwayne, the tongue kisser, and he dissed Arby Graham. But why was Pusha T never blackballed or or uh, his career uh, halted? It's because he had a bodyguard, and his bodyguard is Kanye West. That's how this business works. That's how this industry works. If you have a bodyguard. And bodyguard meaning somebody who them people worship, them people are going to bow down. Not bow down to, they don't bow down to none of you. But if you have one of those people that they value, then you can diss everybody nothing happens to you. That's why 50 Cent could diss the locks and diss 
Fat Joe and this this person and this R. Kelly because his bodyguards were Jimmy Iovine, Dr. Dre, Eminem. Pusha T can diss all these mainstream rappers because his bodyguards Kanye West. They don't value uh, Aubrey and uh, uh, Little Dwayne more than Kanye West. They don't. Kanye West. Kanye West talked about you know the small hats. He talked about this. He talked about that. And then they fake banned him just to give him back his deals and just to still do business with him. Please. They love Kanye West. Now they'll they'll let Aubrey they'll let him take all these shots and all these things and and fake try to protect him. But they value Kanye West more than all these puppets. Kanye West, Jay Z, great. So if you have a bodyguard, you can diss people. Now if Pusha T was not signed to Kanye West, he would have been blackballed ten years ago. Because that's how this works. It's one big high school of politics. But the point of this video is, the teaching lesson is to take advantage of things. Because Kendrick Lamar clearly did, and Pusha T did not. And then push a T, I think a few years later, what was it, 20, maybe 2022, or was it last year maybe? He dropped uh, It's Almost Dry, and I I, re I reviewed that album, I, it's alright, but like, another thing with Pusha T, it's like, it's been 20 years of every song's about coke. Him and Young Jeezy, just every song for 20 years is about coke. With or without the straw, every song. So... I don't know, maybe maybe he took breaks or he doesn't put out as much because maybe he ran out of metaphors for uh, selling powder. I don't know. But um, this was a clear example of uh, how to take advantage of something and how to let it just flounder because Pusha T, he should have dropped more videos. He should have been... I don't know. He, he just didn't take advantage of it. But also at the time, I do believe... I don't know how many people know this. Pusha T, he does have his own label, but... Even that don't make sense. And then at the time, he was a president of good music, but then now he, I think he quit. I don't know. But um, he had his own label. I, I don't know if he started around that time of Infrared, but he has his own label. And then the weird thing about Pusha T's label is, and I, I don't get this about a lot of these rappers, Pusha T, he kind of, you know, he kind of like a 90s style rapper with like modern beats. But all his artists on his label are like these drugged out auto-tune syrupy rappers. I, how does that fit? How does Pusha T fit with a bunch of Rainbow Dread syrup rappers? He don't have no real MCs. <laughs> but maybe that's just an insecurity thing. Sometimes these rappers are threatened if you can really rap too. So they want a bunch of garbage, soulless people around them so they stand out. That's a real thing. Like I said, rap is one big high school. And with that said, I'm up out of here. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And that is it. If you want a video request, you can also donate to the Cash App. Most of my videos come from people's donations of these ideas. Talk about this. Talk about that. Talk about this. Okay, donate to the Cash App. And uh, I'm out of here.